If you have your Bibles with you this morning, we'd ask that you turn to 1 Thessalonians, uh, 1 Thessalonians mm -hmm. chapter 5, and we're going to begin reading in the first verse. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and the first verse, uh, while you're turning there, we can all be grateful now that Hannah and Brother Jarrett have made it in, and the Lord's kept them safe. Uh, uh, Jarrett's car is sweet, but it's not made for Stewart County flood. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, beginning in the first verse. The Bible says, But of the times and the seasons, bre brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. That's it. That's it. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for this word that you give us. Lord, for what it means to us on an everyday occasion, for the provision for it, uh, for the help and the encouragement it gives us every day. And we give you the praise for it, for it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now, some very familiar verses of Scripture. Uh, Paul beginning to close out his first letter to the church, the church at Thessalonica, and he will write them again later. Now, um, Thessalonica had some issues, but it certainly wasn't like the churches of Galatia or the churches, the church of Corinth. And there is less corrective stuff. There is some. But there's a great deal of encouragement, including in the letter to the Thessalonican church. And probably the most encouraging portion is here that is uh, divided into the last chapter, and that is the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, when you get most discouraged, remember the Lord Jesus Christ is coming. Now this has been taught and preached my whole life, I can remember well 50 years ago, and some of you can remember past that, uh, and it was being preached then too. Now, just never forget that just because it's been preached before doesn't mean that it's not coming. Uh, I'll give you a wonderful example. The Bible teaches us as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Where are we at? We are in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. We see it every day. Uh, that's a clue. That's an indication. And uh, so the years that have transpired since the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ does not null or void the blessing that's contained in here. It's just that we have to learn to be patient. And there are very, very few pa patient people that I know. Uh, most of us are very impatient beings. So as Paul is beginning to write this, he says, but of the times and the seasons. Now, uh, remember this, times are not, and seasons too, really, times and seasons were not given to us because God needed them, but it's because we needed them. We need some way to transpire time because God doesn't have to. God is a constant. God is an everlasting being. He always has been. He always will be. There's no markers of time on the great God Jehovah. They are for us. Now, uh, I don't know about you, but this is probably the wettest August that I've lived in in 55 years. Usually it's dry, and you've got to hide your face from the dust that's blowing in the wind. And it, it's just rained and rained and rained. But Sarah and I, as we was driving to church this morning, we noticed one tree, and that one over by the, at the edge of the road, it's kind of saying they're just beginning to turn a little bit. What does that tell us as people who live in the woods? It's getting to be fall. That's a season. That's time. We know, we know that part of the, that one part of the year is gone, and another part is coming. Listen, the time of Christ is coming. Uh, don't, any, don't let anybody discourage you and say, oh, that's a bunch of foolishness. 
Uh, you know what the Bible says, and he was writing to another church, he says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Yeah. So one thing that we can find, and as Adam got on it today, in this age of chronic, chronic depression, even among God's people, one of the keys is we're not waiting. Wait on the Lord. Yeah. Now, uh, have you ever waited on your wife? It can be a long way, right? Uh, I remember uh, when me and Donna, and my brother here played on me, tell this, when me and Donna first married, he'd take off and leave you, and then Donna would have to get in the other car and drive to church yourself. <laughs> and uh, you know why? Because Brother Junior don't like waiting. And, and I don't either. I'm not being critical. And, and notice when he goes to a fellowship, he backs in. And you know why? Because he doesn't like to wait. And, and that's okay. That's, that's just who he is. But it is, in a spiritual sense, a challenge because there's a difference between waiting and wanting something right now. And I think a lot of times the reason we get discouraged, we're not waiting on the Lord. We're demanding. I want you to come right now. Yeah, yeah. He's not under your authority ship. Yeah, you're, you're under right. his. Mm -hmm. and, and so we see then that as Paul is writing at, to the church at Thessalonica, he gives them some good advice even from the beginning, and that is to look around you and know the times and the season. But the times and seasons, brethren, he was talking to a church. He was talking to a group of believers you have, you have no need that I write unto you. Now, if he's making it a point, say, I don't need to write this to you, but he was anyway, what do we have to assume at the church at Thessalonica is they, yes, were in fact getting impatient, getting, uh, getting discouraged in the waiting of the Lord. So even though he said, I shouldn't have to do this, but because of the nature of mankind, I'm going to write and remind you one more time about the coming of Christ. Then he says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night. Now, first I'll ask you, what does a thief do to be qualified as a thief? You've got to take something, right? <laughs> You gotta, you gotta steal something. I mean, I can come into your house and be an uninvited guest, but as long as I don't pick up and carry something out, I'm not a thief, right? right. Now, see, the good news is, you know, you know what he's going to take? He's going to take us. We, we are, we are the object. We are the thing being stolen from this ungodly world. He's going to come as a thief in the night. And, and, and he's going to take us home to be with him. What, what a richer promise can God's people have? What, what a glorious thing that we can understand we're going to be taken. Now, another thing about, uh, about a thief, if somebody came into our house, and uh, most, all, I guess all of you have been there at some point, um, y'all know we have a bunch of strange stuff. That it, it, it is stuff that means something to who? Mostly me and Donna. I think even Sarah and Bella thinks it's strange stuff sometimes. Uh, but it means something to us. It, it, but if it got stolen, who would recognize it? Just us, right? The girls might, might be glad about a few things, but me and Donna would notice it. If I walked in the door and my phone, my antique phone wasn't at that wall, I would, I would get bent out of shape really, really quick. So who do we belong to? We belong to the very individual that's going to steal us back. So think about this. Nobody else cares. When we're out of here, there are not going to be people wringing their hands and saying, I wish Larry was back. I miss him so much. In fact, we're going to be doing this. Thank God, he's finally out of my hair. Listen, I'm talking not a ripple in the pond. Left behind uh, those foolish movies, they ain't even worth the, the amount of money it took to create them. Because listen, the thief is going to come and steal. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to come get us. And it will be a ripple in the pond. That's right. 
You, you know those that will go and Adam, you know, those who are trusting Christ. But you know, the bulk majority of the people today are trusting emotion, trusting water baptism, and those are going to be your left behinds. Those are going to be the individuals that don't go. So we find, first of all, our Lord Jesus Christ uh, is going to come as a thief and he's going to take us as his treasure, as the stolen goods, that's who we are. And he says, yourselves know perfectly. Now, that word perfectly, and it certainly can mean perfect, but how perfect is taken is changed a lot. We think perfect is errorless, no errors, right? But uh, when he calls us perfect, and he does in the word of God, he's talking about being complete. So do you know perfectly, do you know completely about the return of the Lord Jesus Christ? See, that's a priority for me. I, I want to know this and this and this and this. That's what I want to know about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, return. Now, will I ever know the time and the day? Absolutely not. Now, he just said the times and the seasons. Listen, it's getting to be the fall of the year, right? Sodomites are taking over, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, you know what that is? The fall of the year is coming. It's fall. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we see in the very same way that we know, we can know a great deal about the return of Christ. You'll never know the day. Y'all remember that guy a few years ago? Oh, it's going to be blah, 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 blah. Whenever... Whenever you hear somebody say that, you just write it off. It's not true because no man knoweth the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. But I do think we can know the season. I do think we know, can know the season. Then he says, uh, verse 3, Now, when they shall say peace and safety, yeah. then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child. Now, I want you to notice two things. Uh, we are in the peace and safety time. And really, we have been since the 1960s. Uh, the Cold War, when Russia was looking at us and we were looking at Russia. Now, you know what that was? It was a false sense of peace. Who's going to hit the button first, right? Did it ever happen? No. And then when the wall came down, Reagan did a few things there. And there's been a few wars. We went to the de deserts of the east three times now. And you know what? The same problem still exists <laughs> than the first time that we went, right? And, uh, but now, Look at the man we have in the White House. You think he's going to declare war on somebody? Look at what's going on in Russia and uh, the nation there that I visited. Uh, nobody's getting involved. Have you noticed that? <laughs> nobody's saying, Ukraine, I'm standing by you. And even maybe more significantly, nobody's applauding Russia either. You know why? Because they want peace. They want peace. Now, have you ever thought about that and this? If all of a sudden we stood up and say, Ukraine were behind you 110%, it would be a domino effect. And the entire the third war war would be on us. But it's not happening. You know why? Because men and people are saying peace and safety. Peace and safety. Look at Justin back there. I don't want that kid to be drafted. Do you? Peace and safety. Peace and safety. I'm even saying it. I remember the second time uh, we went into Iraq, my boys both were draft age. You know what? I didn't want them to go. Peace and safety. Peace and safety. You know what? Uh, as a nation, that's who we've become, is it not? And, and, and so we see that this, this political statement 
In addition to the Sodomites taking over, in addition, we find this second clue, and that is when everything will be all right. But notice the rest of that verse says, but it will come as travail upon a woman with child. Now, in almost 95% of the women uh, that Donna cares for, I just want to get this over with. And 90% of them will try something. But you know what? Donna will tell them, relax. It'll happen when it happens. Right? i never known an expectant mother not to have a baby one way or the other. Have you? And I will say this. It is not escapable. If you, even if you have a C-section, it's done, right? It's still not escapable. So whatever is before us, it will transpire. The message of peace and safety will be short-lived because it will happen. It's an inesca inescapable event. So Paul tells the church at Thessalonica, don't get comfortable when they say peace and safety. Verse 4, we get some good news. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Right. So in other words, you can be aware. You can be ready. You can say, oh, I see this happening and this happening and this happening. Uh, you know what? Years ago, and some of you are old enough in here to remember this, and Mom would watch the news. She would just had this fetish. You remember when there were ABC, NBC, and CBS? That's the only ones that were out there. And I know you two, and probably Donna, y'all remember when them prisoners killed that uh, couple down there at the lake? Uh, went in there, and uh, they were down there several days. They run off from Lake County Prison. Killed someone down at the lake. Yeah, an old couple. Stayed in there in their house with them dead in there. And, uh, uh, Mama put her porch light on. And I remember James kind of chuckling at her and saying, Mama, what's that going to do? Well, I can see them coming. <laughs> and, you know, it's time to put the porch lights on, ain't it? It's time to put the porch light on. Do you look for him? Do you look to it as you really believe it, that, that he is near to come unto us very soon? Put your porch light on. Begin to look. Uh, uh, get your... Uh, Get your end time prophecy uh, brushed up in your brain and understand what is going to be nigh unto the coming of Christ because he's on us. Verse 5, you are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. In other words, we don't have to be ignorant. The world is going to be ignorant. The world is not have any interest. In fact, the world is going to say, hey, this is not even true. They're in darkness. Don't, don't, don't be upset about that. Yes, you're in the minority. That's okay. Verse 6. Knowing that, with that in mind, therefore let us not sleep. It gives you two, two ideas. Number one, the Lord's churches can go to sleep. If he says do not sleep, then possibility must exist, right? You know, uh, there were some pretty good churches down through the years at, at, in Stewart County. Elk Creek used to be an amazing church in the 70s. But you know what? They've gone to sleep. They began to look at, no, uh, you can't pack people in there like sardines now. That building seats, I think, 350 people. And they're packed in there like sardines, but they're asleep. And, and it's very, it's very remote. I mean, a very real possibility that New Testament could go to sleep. <laughs> that uh, Northside Baptist Church could go to sleep. You see what I'm saying? In other words, there has to be an awareness that okay, we're going to stick to this. And when we see these items coming to pass. We're going to shout about them. We're going to say, hey, lost people, it's coming. It's getting nearer and nearer. Hey, uh, one another, let's encourage us. I see something wonderful on the horizon. We're going home. Ye are all the 
children of light, the children of day, we are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Now, that word sober, and it can mean that. It doesn't mean I don't want you drunk. I want you to be serious. Now, you can laugh and have a good time, but when it comes down to the things of God, we need to be serious. Man. When someone says, you know what? One way is as good as another. We need to say, hey, wait a minute. We need to be sober and say, you know what? I know you're probably sincere, but that's not right. Yeah. Christ is the only way. Uh, a personal relationship with Christ is your only hope to leave this place and, and to go to eternity to be with him. We need to be the kind of people who say that. When we, uh, when we see our own nation falling on its face with, with people like Biden in the hospital. I mean, well, he probably needs to be in the hospital, in the White House. And we're going, oh me, oh my. No, we need to be doing this. Hey, there's a sign. The, the, there's an indication that things are changing. We have been the strongest nation on earth since World War II. And things are starting to change. Look over there. We don't have to be upset about it and crying and, and upset. What we need to be is rejoicing about it and saying, hey, lost people, the time is coming. The time is near. The USA is fixing to go out of business. We need to look. And, and so we see a lot of things that we as the Lord's people see. Instead of, instead of being boo-hoo about it, we need to be excited and glad and warning our lost family, hey, it's getting close. Verse 7, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are drunken are drunken in the night. Again, all the lost people, so what are they drunken with? Now, I have known a lot of very evil men that would not drink a drop. <laughs> so what are they drunken of? What are they drinking? What this world has to offer. <laughs> They're taking down our political system and thinking it's better than, than sliced cheese. They're, 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 they're eating the internet up. They, they, they are, they're believing whatever they're told. They're believing what is ever, whatever is said in the modern day. And he says, that, that is how you go to sleep. Verse 8, but let us who are of the day, again we see our key word, be sober or be serious about this, putting on the breastplate of faith. The breastplate covers your visceral organs, the ones that maintain life. How good is your faith? You know what I found among God's people, and sad but true, Illness is the tester of faith for mankind. It's not, it's not lost people dying, shame on us. That, that's not it. But we're such a protective uh, desire to live. Testing our health will test your faith. Now, since we know that to be true, we might as well accept it and use it for what it is. It's a tester, right? other day when I didn't, I really didn't know what was wrong with me. It was a test. And, and, and it was very, a very, very strange feeling. I knew something was wrong. And wasn't too sure what it was. But you know what? I had, I had the faith the Lord would take care of it. But see what we don't want to look at sometimes? Sometimes his way to take care of it is to take us home. You know really what my biggest concern was? That I did not have a, a legal will drawn up. That was my biggest concern. Now, if I go first, everything goes to Donna. And I'm assuming if she goes first, everything comes to me. And, uh, and we got plans for the rest of it. But you know, they don't mean a whole lot if they're not written down. Right? Right. 
So that, really the future of my children and my wife, that was my only concern. Because you know what? Read the obituaries. There's a lot of people a lot younger than me dying every day. So I'm not exempt, and dear friend, you're not either. So are you ready to go? Uh, are, are you ready, uh, like these people are, to look for what's coming, to be aware of where we're at in the end time? But let's who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and of love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Let's, let's be well equipped. Now go with me to the little epistle of Jude. Just one chapter. But it's, uh, it's packed full of good stuff. Jude chapter, just one chapter, the epistle of Jude, verse 14. Jude, verse 14. The Bible says, And Enoch, now, y'all know the special thing about Enoch, why? He never saw death. The Bible says he was translated. Very similar to what we were just talking about, being called away, right? Being stolen, being taken from this earth. Enoch is an example of that happening in the Old Testament. So very same thing. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied or preached of these, saying, Behold, the Lord, Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. Now, we'll look at that just in a minute. But, you know, this is the thing to be excited about. Some people say to be discouraged about. But you know what? Enoch... <laughs> Enoch was before Noah. And he was looking then for the coming. He says, the Lord is coming with 10,000 of his saints. And you know when that is going to occur? We'll look at it in a minute, but I'll give you a hint. It comes after the millennial reign. So if the Lord came today, that's still a thousand years down the road. Right. And think about this. It was six or seven thousand years from the time of Enoch. How is your patience? How, 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 what are your waiting skills this morning? And, and so we find that uh, the Lord Jesus inspiring Jude gives us a wonderful example of just waiting and looking for the Lord. Verse 15, to execute judgment against all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all the, their hard speeches with ungodly spinner, sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers. Now, it sounds like politicians in verse 15, but notice what happens in verse 16. These are murmurers. Man, I can't stand this man. It makes me sick to my stomach. That's a murmur. I'm so sick of brown beans, I could throw them up. That's a murmur. To, these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust and their mouth, speak, speaking great swelling words, having men's person in admiration because of advantage. Mm. So, you know what? Their, their doctrine... It's going to sound good, and Jerry can come up with this because he's a lot younger than me. That, uh, that guy that always is health and well, he has a big, looks like a used car salesman grin on, and he's, uh, and, and you know, everybody's going to be rich. Joel Osteen. Joel Osteen. I knew Jerry could come up with it. Uh, but you know what? That's simply not true. If I understand the Bible correctly, we're actually going to be poor in comparison, I mean. But you know we're rich with the inward things, or we're not. We're, we're blessed to understand what's happening. So we see even in the day of Enoch, this situation existed, and even that in the day, Enoch was waiting. And you know, well, what a wonderful example. Enoch lived to see it. And the Bible says Enoch walked with God and he was not, for the Lord took him. Man, that's good. 
You know what? I bet those gainsayers are like, where's Enoch? I hadn't seen Enoch in three or four days. Have you? I bet they sent out a posse to see if they could find old Enoch. And you know what? Enoch wasn't there. <laughs> now, in the modern day, don't, let, don't, don't expect them to send a posse out for us. The, the, their attitude will be good riddance. <laughs> right? And, and, and so we find that this has always been the case of God's people. is looking on to the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, last place, Revelation chapter 20. And we're going to close. Very familiar verses of Scripture. If you know your end time study of the book of Revelation, uh, this is after the millennial reign. Sin, despite what some people teach, sin has not yet been defeated in this, in this situation. Sin is still around. And the reason I can say that assuredly is because the beast rises again. And he's he's not he's in the, he's in a pit here, and not the lake of fire. Once, once he's in the lake of fire, it's a done deal. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Revelation twenty. We're going to begin reading in verse four. Uh, for time's sake, uh, John says, and I saw the thrones, and them that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Now the next time you get upset about about our country. Remember, they will be judged. They will be held accountable. Uh, it's not our place, but the Almighty will hold them accountable. And I saw the souls of men that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had worship, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. That means you're saved. On such the second death have no power, but they shall be the priest of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. We will be in the millennial reign as leaders. Verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Now, I just want you to think about this. All the evil contained in the person of Satan. Now, think about him and his imps out here today, the destruction, the misery, and, and and the hopelessness he brings upon the earth, how he kills young people with drugs, how he, he causes abortion to exist no matter what, how, how, how he uh, puts drugs into the, into the life of people and destroys it time and time again. Now, you know why he does that? He loves it. He enjoys it. Think about your favorite pastime. Uh, I love reading the Bible, but just just what your favorite pastime outside the Scripture is. And I love genealogy, and I, I dig on my phone and dig, and I found some stuff. Eric helped me fix a headstone this week, and it, it was just a fun time for me, which most people are like, man, you're nuts. Uh, right? And uh, But I, I, I enjoy it. And, and we find here, Satan enjoys destruction more than we enjoy our favorite thing. Now, have you ever been in a situation where you couldn't do your favorite thing? Or do your favorite thing is mowing? I've got seven acres to hook you up with. <laughs> uh, uh, but, what if you can't mow? What if you're too sick? What if it rains like Noah's flood? You can't get out there. I'd say when mowing time came again, you'd be set on the deck, right? You know what Satan's going to be? He's going to be set in past rig. Mm -hmm. And he's going to do what he's done for the, since he fell from heaven, he's going to be back in full force. Can you imagine what a scream and what an ungodly sound it'll be when it comes out of the pit? 
when he when he begins in it, uh, his first attack on God's people, on the people of the living in a thousand years. Thank God we're going to be we're not going to be we're not going to be involved in that. Verse eight, his plan will and shall go out and deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, and the number of whom is the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and they compassed the camp of the saints about the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the, bre the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So the next time you get discouraged, and next time the devil comes your way, and he will, I can I can assure you of that. If you're any kind of servant, now if you're pish posh and, and not much of a servant to start with, he's got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> right? Have you considered my servant Job? There's none mm -hmm. like him in the earth. <coughs> Same thing with Enoch, right? So if you have a sincerity to serve Christ, expect problems. He's not really coming. That's a fairy tale. Right? Listen, he's coming. <laughs> he's going to return. We're on course. We're on point. I don't know the exact day or the exact hour, but there's alarms going off everywhere. And we ought to be able to see him instead of uh, instead of wringing our hands and wonder what's going to be next. Listen, it's like, that's like your alarm clock going off the third time. Now, I never typically, I never use an alarm clock. I, I, I wake up on my own. But, uh, I've had a lot of nurse friends uh, that say, well, I've set three alarms. And I just shake my head. I'm like, you set three alarms? I said, how many people live with you? I live by myself. Mm. I hope you don't have to set three alarms. I'm afraid sometimes you <coughs> finish that one. And then when the next thing happens, Instead of looking at it as an alarm, look at it as, as Christ going, there's one more, there's one more, there's one more. So all this brings us down to this. Are you ready to leave? Do you know Christ? If you live here, we, we, we have a World War II veteran at the nursing home that I work at who's 102. He he was um, he was at Pearl not Pearl Harbor he was when we attacked Europe uh, can't think of the name of the the battle he survived and came home and that's a long time to live ain't it you know what I bet he heard as a fifteen year old boy which in that day would have been not about nineteen thirty five or nineteen thirty six. I bet he heard then, Christ is coming. Christ is coming. You know what I'm telling you today? Christ is coming. Do you know it? Do you have a personal relationship with him? Has he saved your never dying soul? If you live to be 102 like my little patient, that's the only thing that matters. He had one of the largest farms in Houston County. Now you can put all his items together in a box. So what does matter? What does matter? What does that, what do those things matter? We're convinced from a very early age that everything, do, are we not? They're really not much, are they? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you been born again? That's the only thing that matters. <laughs> And eating between now and the time that you go home, that's really the only two things that you have to worry about, right? Do you know Christ? <laughs>